and truly, truly are. Because the people that know their God are going to be strong and be able to do exploits. exploits. And one of, the, one of the neatest things that's been around for Church on the Street a long time was Pastor Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Pete has been a mighty, mighty warrior here for a long, long time. Now, Pastor Pete has got cancer also. And he's decided not to take treatment also. So the diagnosis, according to man, isn't that good. But I'll tell you whatever, the fire this, that God's got in this man is something else. So we are blessed to have Pastor Pete here this morning just to come up and, and open the Word of God. And I pray that you listen to the Holy Spirit speak to Pastor Pete. God bless you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, something, something. Well, I, I say funny happened, but it's beautiful. Because, you know, the doctor said, you know, you're stage four, and that means you only got so much to live. So I decided not to take chemo, but he wanted to live. And I dropped the medications, and then I went to uh, to the Lord, and a lot of you are praying for me. Without medication, without chemo, the uh, PSA level is starting to go down. The thing is, with medication, it kept going up. So uh, that tells us that prayer it's power. Amen. Come to the Lord and He is doing it. I believe that the Lord will continue to do that. Uh, the moment he's, He told me where I was at, the, the doctor, uh, from, that, from that moment on, I started to have more strength, <laughs> more energy. I said, well, what's going on here, Jesus? <laughs> Amen. All right. Glad to see a lot of you. I only have an hour and a half. So. <laughs> you got enough time. It's cold, but you got to stay by yourself. Amen. Give a little anger, A police dog uh, went to the FBI because there was an ad that they needed some help. So he goes in and they say, well, you know, we've got real strict uh, requirements here, so... He said, well, I'll try it. Well, he said, you need, you need to type at, at least 60 words per minute. To, so he, the dog goes out to the typewriter, he types 80 words per minute. And they say, well, now you have to go through this physical test and this obstacle course, and that's you know, very rigid. He said, well, I'll go through it. And he went through it, I mean, with record time. But we got one more thing that, that is required. And, you know, to be in the FBI, you need to, uh, to be bilingual. And the dog looked with a lot of confidence at the, at the people and said, meow. Bilingual dog came on. Okay, let's go into the word of God. In, in Proverbs, the 15th chapter, verse 3. I want to say that I, I have spoken on this uh, topic two, three years ago, maybe more. So most of you were not here. And it is, I'm not going to speak on storms today, because I love to speak on the storms of life. But today I'm going to go a different route. Proverbs 15. Verse 3. And it reads like this in the New King James. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Now my Bible is the New Living Translation, and it says, The Lord is watching everywhere, keeping his eye on both the evil and the good. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. And we believe you're already here. 
Your presence is here as the praise and worship was taking place. Your Holy Spirit moved in this place. And now, Lord, take this word into our hearts and produce what only you can produce. And we thank you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, the Bible teaches us a lot about our God. One of the things that the Lord teaches is that God is omniscient, which means that he knows everything. His knowledge is infinite. It's beyond the limit. That there's no secret that we can hide from him. I mean, he knows the, the past, the present, and the future all in one time. That, that's the God we serve. His omniscient. But he is also omnipresent. Which means that he's everywhere at the same time. His essence his glory is here, is in Canada, in Mexico, anywhere else. He is there at all times. He is here. There is no place where God is not. Right. Now, I know there's a little story about this little kid that was in, in Sunday school that the teacher was trying to teach that, that, that God is everywhere. Is it? God is everywhere, he told the kids, and does anybody know where Jesus is not? The little kid raised his hand and said, yes, in the heart that had sin. Now, even there, God is, but in a different way. I mean, you know that. Okay, now, I mentioned that God is omniscient, that God is omnipresent. Now, how many agree with that? Amen. How many know that, that that sound doctrine? That, that that's what the Bible teaches. Amen. Now, once I have said that, let me go a different direction. So you have to pay a lot of attention because I might not give you sound doctrine. My doctrine could be false. So you're going to have to open your ears and pay attention to this. Because ever have, after said, having said that, I want to preach in five things that God has never seen. Wow. Five things that God has never seen. Amen. Now, I might go wrong biblically. So that's why you need to be there. And, and Mr. Lee is right here. Do you have the Bible? No. Uh, so. So let's let's go into it. five things that God has never seen. You ready? Yeah. Write them down so you can go and speak about them somewhere else. Number one, you don't want to get killed. Number one, God has not seen someone that He did not love. Wow. Oh. Wow. God has never seen a person. Wow. A man or a woman that he does not love. Now you and I have. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right. there, there are some people that they are very difficult to love. I mean, they have some character, they have some attitude, they have a different situation that they say, Lord. Help me! <laughs> Help me to love them. Yeah, we, we, you know, it could be the roommate. It, it could be, you know, the neighbor. It, it could be the fellow worker. It, it could be your mother-in-law. You know, it, it could be someone. But, but God is not like God is not the way we are. Because we like people if they do something for us. Yeah. We like people if, if they're kind. We like people that they do us favors. We, we like people if they're nice and, and so on. But you know, God is love. And he loves us in spite 
of us not being lovely. In spite of us not being kind. Because God is love. That's, that's the essence. That's his nature. In fact, it says it's one of his attributes, but I, I want to go further than that. that. That's further than just an attribute, but that's his nature, a natural thing that God is. God is love. And as I look at the scripture, it tells us again and again that God is love. Romans 5, 8 says, ready? For God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So the proof that God loves us in spite of being sinners is that he gave his only son on the cross. He loves us as that much. And also the Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 9, is that in this the love of God was manifested towards us. How? That God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. That the love that God has for us. Jeremiah 31, 3 says, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love, with unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Wow, that's tremendous. A person, young man, <coughs> was in prison. He came out. They lived in a small village. And he had done something wrong, and all the village knew about it. And his elderly parents had been hurt by this son. So he's coming out, he's going home, and he's on the train. And he had sent a letter knew, knowing that, that it was difficult for mom and dad to forgive him. And he said in a letter, I am going home. I'm on the train. The train goes behind the yard of the house. Mom and dad, if you still love me, after all I did, that your name was blemished by my action, and if you still love me, as the train goes by, there's a tree in the back where I used to have a swing and I play. Would you please, please put up a red ribbon on that tree and it'll tell me that you still love me. And if you, you do and I see the ribbon, I'll get down at the station and I come home. But if I don't see it, I'll just go on, I don't know where. Just before he got there, he tells a friend, passenger, and said, would you do me a favor? Would you please look to the left? This certain house, and he gives them where it's at is said, there's a tree. Look for a ribbon that be hanging on the tree and let me know if there's one. He gets so, so nervous and, and he just, you know, he climbs his head and said, tell me. The man said, we are almost there. He said, there it is. And he said, is there a red ribbon? on the tree and the man said no there is no one red ribbon he said the whole tree is filled with red ribbons they love you go home and let me tell you if you have not heard of the love of God this morning let me just mention if God had to put red ribbons all over the, the tree world that is around to let you know that he loves you. He will do that. But you know what? He don't have to. Because 2,000 years ago, the Bible teaches me that he, not one red ribbon, but on one tree, he stained it with his own blood, red, to tell you that he loves you. He loves you. There's no one here that God does not love it. And if you're here, God brought you here. God has a purpose for you on this. 
Okay, that's number one. Am I all right in the doctrine? Yeah. Yeah. The other ones I don't know about. <laughs> number two, God has never seen someone God has never seen uh, um, okay God has never seen someone he could not save he has never seen someone he could not save as I look at the scripture it's beautiful what, what it tells us about the Lord. You know, for some, some of us, and for some people, they're, they're, they might have persons or people in their life that they say, mm. they're beyond help. <laughs> no remedy. That's it. You're talking about my husband, you're talking about my wife, you're talking about my friend, you're talking about they are the devil personified. They are devils. <laughs> they will never get saved. You know, we look at people like that, and sometimes we go and so in and say, yeah, that person can get saved, or that, and no, forget it, don't even talk to them. <laughs> we get to that point. But you know, God is able to save the most depraved sinners. Amen. Regardless of where he's at. Look at he saved Paul. Who was after Christians and he had them slain, had them killed. And the Lord saved him and he became one of the best preachers and doctrine uh, teachers that have ever lived. Because God is able to save the sinner. Glory to God. And as I continue to look at, at, at the scripture, there's so many things that we find there. Uh, for example, the Bible says in Luke 19.10, this is important. It says that the Son of Man came to seek, to seek and to save that which was not only does he love you, but he's also looking for you because he wants to save you because he can save you. Amen. If, if that was not enough, just look around. How many drunk, drug addicts, people down and out, God has saved that are here right now. Let me see your hand. Look around. Now, what I'm saying, if you would hear the testimony of each and every one of them and say, wow, if that can get saved, I get saved too. Because I'm talking about the power of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb that cleanses us of all sin. Give the Lord a good hand. Second Peter 3 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's holding back to give everybody a chance. Because whoever will be saved. Now, I know there's doctrines out there that God said that he has a select number to get saved and all the almonds can go to hell. But I don't believe that. Whosoever will can be saved. Okay. All right, well, number two. Number three. God has never seen a sickness he cannot heal. He has never seen a sickness he cannot heal. Now medical science has many, or said, have seen many people with sicknesses that they have to just throw their hands up and say, that's all we can do. 
We can't do anymore. Just take them home and take them to the hospice. And, you know, they only got a few months, a year or so, and that's it. Well, it's been, what, three and a half years or four, I forget. The doctor told me you only have a year, maybe a year and a half. I'm still thinking. <laughs> you don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not afraid to die. I would love to go with be with Jesus. I, I even I even make a little humor about that. Yes, yeah, if I'm be buried here in Phoenix. And if they have a coffin here, I'll, I'll be there, and you, you guys come and see me in the coffin. And I say, hey, you still got anger issues? <laughs> Are you getting it right? <laughs> but I don't believe God wants to take me right now. You know why? Because there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah. My ministry hasn't finished. I still got a lot to that God wants me to accomplish. Every one of us has something to do for the Lord. Yeah. So, uh, the Bible teaches that God identifies himself as our healer. Back in the Old Testament, he says, For I am the Lord who heals you. One of his names is that. The healer. That he can heal us. Now, if that is God, then... Well, maybe he'll heal, you know, headaches, but, you know, diseases that are, that are beyond uh, the doctor's help, maybe not. But look at what the Bible says. Peter, was, you know, took Jesus to his house. When they got there, his mother-in-law was sick in bed. And Jesus healed him. Hallelujah. Some say that that's the reason that Peter denied Jesus for treating his mother-in-law. <laughs> but, you know, that's what a lot of people say. <laughs> but, the mother-in-law got healed by Jesus and she, she got out of the bed and started serving. <laughs> but, but look at what it says right next to that. It said, when evening had come, at the same time, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. He healed all who were sick. In Matthew 4, 24, it says, then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who are demon possessed, epileptics and uh, paralytics, and he healed them. I don't have all the time to mention, but it's, the Bible says, and he healed them all. And he healed them all. Matthew 12, 15, and, then when, and when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Now, in the Greek, it's important that you understand what all means. And when you look at, at the Hebrew, it's important that you know what it means. In Hebrew, in Greek, all means all. In Spanish, all means todo. All he healed. So what are we saying here? That Jesus can heal whatever sickness you might have. Amen. Sugar in your blood, Amen. cancer, Amen. high blood pressure, whatever it is, Alzheimer's, or whatever sickness it is, he is the healer. He is able to heal. <laughs> the power is there. He paid at the cross, Isaiah 53. Five, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and his by his stripes we are healed. Is that in the Bible? Has God changed? Now, as we get old, we get weaker. But the Bible says about God, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still in the healing business. He can still heal it. Okay, we are right. Praise the Lord. Number four. Okay, God. Well, I better jump this way. Oh, might not be. All right, anyway, God has never seen a circumstance that He could not change. You and I sometimes are in certain circumstances that we say this is it. There's no way out. There's no exit. There's no way I can have victory over this situation. I mean, have ever been in a situation where you think this, this is it. I'm a goner. <laughs> yeah. This is it. Well, we all have been there. 